Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Today, of course, is our live stream, so I'll be taking all of your questions. If you're watching this live, be sure and post your questions over in the uh, live chat section. If you're watching this on replay, go ahead and put your comments down below, and I'll try to get to your questions as quickly as I can. I answer as many questions as I can, even on the replay, just sometimes it takes me a few days to get to them. Um, but we have some excitement to start the show off here. Carlos has become a new YouTube member. Thank you, Carlos. I'm glad you're here. If you're just showing up, be sure and say hi. And of course, if you can't hear me, let me know. I think everything's working okay, but you never know until somebody says it's working okay. But welcome to the family, Carlos. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Mrs. Perfectly Imperfect Keto. Love the name. Great. Good evening, everyone, and hello to you. I'm glad you're here. And we have John Lindbergh checking in from the Chicago area. Welcome, John. Up to 11 people already. That's pretty awesome. I'm glad you're all here. Don't forget to say hi in the, con in the live chat over there. I do want to go over a few channels because everybody always asks me, Bob, what channels do you watch? Um, besides, of course, the big ones. Um, and Jackie's Jinxed Journey has showed up and told me that everything sounds good. Um, but yeah, a few of the, the channels that I watch on a fairly regular basis, um, in no particular order, but these are obviously, you know, Dr. Barry, Dr. Baker, Dr. Chafee, Steak and Butter Gal, Kelly Hogan, all the big ones. Um, I watch I watch them, of course, but some of the smaller channels that deserve your attention. Um, of course, Jackie is already in here. Jackie's Jinxed Journey is one of those channels that if you're not watching her, you should probably go check her out because I find her very entertaining. Um, Dawn Does Keto. And I've got them all linked down in the uh, description of the video. So after it's over, if you want to go back and look at them, you can just click on their name um, and find their channels. But Dawn Does Keto and uh, Crafty and Carnivorish. We've mentioned her before. She's been here several times. You all know who she is. But if you're not already watching her channel, you should certainly go do it because she's got some good stuff over there. Um, Everyday Carnivore. If you're not watching him, he's a smaller channel, but I did an interview with him a few days ago. He's been on out of town on business for the last week or so, but I expect to be announcing sometime in the next three or four days that my interview with him is going to be coming up on his channel. I will, of course, let you know when that happens. And this last guy, I just think he's fantastic. If you're not watching No Carb Life, you should definitely be checking him out. He's uh, He sounds like he's from he's British or Australian. I'm not sure what, but he lives over in Japan and has been there for quite some time. Um, and he does carnivore in Japan. He's got a lot of very interesting takes on the carnivore diet especially having lived in Japan. I forget exactly how far, how long it is. And those of you that are just joining us, uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Barry, all of the big guys, the channels I'm mentioning here are all smaller channels of less than a thousand subscribers, except No Carb Life. He's actually a little bigger. He's got about 10,000 subscribers, but most of the people that I'm, uh, that I'm talking about here are smaller, smaller YouTube channels. Okay, and let's see what we've got here. Bert, hello, Bert. How are you doing tonight? Good to see you. Hope you're okay. I'm doing great. I hope you're also having a wonderful night, Bert, um, or afternoon or evening, whatever it happens to be where you're at. Um, and that's Mrs. Perfectly Imperfect Keto, which is Sana, saying hello to Jackie. The Raven's Nest is here checking in. Hello. How are you tonight? I hope everybody's had a great day. Um, I started to record tomorrow's video yesterday. Um, took a little break about 
15, 20 minutes into it to check the audio and everything. And it was just way too windy to use. So I record re-recorded the whole thing today because that's one of the things I have a problem with. If I get, you know, two or three miles into making a video and it's absolutely unusable, it's not like I can go back out and re-record it the same day because... You know, if I've already walked four or five or six miles or whatever, I, I can't go do that again the same day. So that's that's why when you see tomorrow's video, you'll see the same shirt that I'm wearing right now because I actually recorded it earlier today. It's a beautiful day here in North Carolina. It was about 60 degrees today. It was 74 yesterday, which is why I wanted to get out into it. But there was a front moving through and it was really, really windy and I put up with a lot of wind noise in my videos, but yesterday was just way, way too much. Way too much wind noise. So that's 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 why you'll see the same shirt in tomorrow's video that you're seeing right now. Um, and Sherry Dobbenmeyer is checking in from Ohio. Let's see here. And Jackie Shink Journey is asking Sherry if she's going to go to any of the Ohio or Indy meetups. You know, and I just saw the the talk about the the Ohio meetups, and it's just it's on the twenty fifth. There's a men's conference here. My plans are I'm going to the men's conference that's on the twenty fourth here, and then I'm going north to Ohio. To visit with my sister and my mom so i'm going to be just a few a couple of days late getting up there so i hope you all have a great time at the the meetups i wish it was a week later but that's okay i'll catch one at some point i'm little itty bitty can't seem to hit that 500 mark i thought you'd hit 500 i could be wrong there are so many of the little channels that I follow. It's hard to keep track of where everybody's at. But you'll get, you'll grow. Keep doing what you're doing, and you will grow. And Sherry's planning on going to the February and and March. That'll be good. Sandra, hello, Sandra. How are you today? I hope you're having a great day. Hey, we're up to 25 already. Don't forget to say hi in the comments, so that I can say hi back to you. And the Ravens says, I'm doing great, Bob. I'm glad I'm here, and you're so made of motivational. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, thank you for being here. I mean, that's my biggest motivation is when you guys show up and say hi. I like that. I like that a lot. And there's Craig Smith. <laughs> that's funny, Craig. Semi-retired Bob was one of the biggest YouTubers until he lost 125 pounds. Yes, indeed. I used to be very, very big. Uh, Cole is saying hello from Buffalo, New York. Hello, Cole. How are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Let's see here. And then February and March is Ohio. The indie meetup is May the 6th. And Ready, Set, Keto, hello, hi in the comments. Um, I'm assuming this is James, but if it's Emily, hello to you too. Hello to both of you. Hiya, I even hit the like button. Oh, well, that's a first. <laughs> no, not really. Um, hello to Ready, Set, Keto. You know, if you guys aren't aware of Ready, Set, Keto... Um, their live stream time is immediately following this one with about a 10 to 15 minute uh, break so that you have time to run off and get a drink of water, use the restroom, whatever. And then you'll be able to jump right in and watch them. And they're very entertaining. See, you can tell everybody likes Ready, Said Keto because everybody's taking a moment to say ho hello to them. And Buck has arrived. Hello, Buck from snowy northern New York State. Eastern, not Buffalo. It's still pretty snowy out there. I'm curious if the snow has gotten to Ohio yet because it hit out in Nebraska yesterday and the day before. And usually Ohio is a day and a half behind what Nebraska gets if the storms continue to track that way. So let me know what the weather is doing there in, uh, in, in Ohio. Make me glad, make me extra glad that I'm not there. I'm already glad that I was not in Nebraska earlier in the week because 
Some parts got 18, 19 inches of snow after they had an inch and a half of freezing rain. And then the temperature drops. So now it's all frozen in place and they're having a hard time getting rid of it. And Jonathan says, watch your videos every morning. Keep up the good work. Well, I'm glad you're here, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Um, that's Sherry saying and it's just James. Emily isn't home from work yet. Okay. And you are obviously home already, James. That's good. Or did you not have to work this week? I, I can never keep track of you and your work schedule, working for the, the state and all that. Um, and Ready, Set, Keto says there is no snow in Ohio. There's a lot of people from Ohio that watch my channel. Um, of course, I used to be from Ohio. I'm not from Ohio anymore. Um, I've been in Nebraska since 1990. Sherry says, cold 30, spitting snow, maybe snow on Sunday, one to three inches. So the storm must have tracked a little north. Um, it looked like it might head that way because after getting snow, a friend of mine owns a, a, a secondhand store out in central Iowa. And she was closed yesterday because the road conditions were so bad. Um, so we'll see which I'll have to look at the maps and see which way it tracked. Jack says, I hate that my most convenient time to do live over live shares, but since I'm covering Radical Geeks Sunday live, I skipped it today. Yeah. Um, and I, I tried to look for another time that wasn't going to overlap you, Jackie, but this this just made the most sense for most of my viewers. Um, so, you know, maybe we can all get together sometime in a Zoom call and rework the whole uh, live schedule for everybody to see what works out. Give me just a second. I got to drink of water, guys. And this is not actually smart water. I just save these bottles and fill it up out of my uh, out of my water filter. I bring the water from inside the church, run it through my water filter, and fill those bottles back up because these are really good for taking out on the trail with me too because they got this nice resealable cap so they don't spill all over the place. But they're still very easy to drink out of when you're out taking a walk or hiking or whatever. And Buck agrees with Jonathan. Bob keeps me honest and interested. Yeah, so there's been a lot of discussion. Oh, Crafty's here. Hello, Crafty. Hyla, how are you today? I'm glad you're here. And there's Craig saying, please hit subscribe button. Bob is only a few subscribers away from 3,000. Yes, yes, yes. I'd like to get to 3,000 subscribers as quickly as I can, but... Again, there's no rush. As I've said in several videos before, I would much rather have 2,500 engaged subscribers than 5,000 people that just occasionally show up. Um, but thank you for, for that, Craig. And let's see here. Sana says, snow, just one of the reasons I've been in Florida for over 20 years now. Yeah, I, I totally get it. Oh, looks like we have our first John. John Kelly says, Bob, I started the diet in May wearing 46 pants. I started out only be able to do 10 sit-ups. I don't do scales, but my 40 waist jeans are baggy now, and the sit-ups are at 175 today. Awesome. Excellent. 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 That deserves a high five and a fist bump, John. Um, I also started in about May. I was wearing... I've, I've lost a lot more around the midsection, but I can't do a whole sit up yet um, because I started off from such a weak position, but I was wearing five size 56 and 58 pants when I started this back on May the 9th, the day before my 59th birthday. Um, but the new pants I got in today are size 38, but that's amazing progress. Good job, John. Everybody say congrats to John in the comments, because that's definitely worth another high five and a fist bump from everybody. Um, but what was I talking about just a second ago? Oh, you know, there's another thing out there that just will not die. Um, where do people get the idea that you have to do carb cycling to make this diet work? Um, it just doesn't make any sense. 
So let me see if I can follow their logic. I cut carbs out of my life and healed many things that I had wrong with me. But now you're trying to tell me that to maintain the healthiness that I have achieved, I now need to add carbs back into my life? What kind of logic is that? It just doesn't make any sense. I know where they're sort of getting it from, but you don't need to do it with carbs. You just need to make sure that even if you're not eating one meal a day, you need to make sure that you have one bigger meal a day so that the protein that you're taking in causes an insulin bump, not a spike, an insulin bump, because staying in ketosis all day, every day is not the goal. The goal is to be in ketosis most of the time, but we still want that insulin spike or bump so that all of the things that insulin does for us, it continues to do that for us. Um, so there's a lot of confusion on that, but you don't need to do it with carbs. Just make sure that even if you're eating a couple of days, you know, a couple of meals a day, make sure one of them is a big meal to make your insulin go up. And then the other one is just enough to fill you up so you can get through to your next big meal. Um, it's entirely up to you how you do it, but you want to make sure you're getting a good insulin bump out of one of your meals, which is, uh, you know, means you need, you need a good amount of protein to do that. Um, and yes, everyone is saying awesome Treasure Rescue, a.k.a. Queen Bean. Hello, how are you today? I'm glad you're here. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, carb cycling just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm going to skip ahead in the comments here because Jackie has a thought on carb cycling. Yeah, carb cycling was talked about more when I did my first run of keto five years ago. I don't hear about it much anymore. Yeah, well, there's, there's some off-the-wall channels out there that still talk about it and... Uh, well, if you follow Bart K, he just corrected somebody um, a few days ago about that. So that's uh, that's where it's coming from. Some of the, uh, let's just say, um, carnivore diet influencers that have, as Professor K would say, have kind of lost their path. And Jackie says, I've dropped since the end of March, another 50 to go, mainly just to say I hit 100. And there's no rush to do that, you know. I've seen your before and afters already, Jackie. You're starting to look fantastic. And another 50 will be nice just so that you can say that you've lost 100. I understand. I know what an accomplishment that was when I could say I, I lost 100. Now, you know. 125 sounds like so much more. And when I lose another 25, I'll be able to uh, pull out the John Lennon song, you know, yesterday or whatever it was. I'm not half the man I used to, I'm, you know, half the man I used to be. That's what I'm really pushing for now. So another 25 would be, will be pretty awesome. And you're right. She did look really slim. Um, she looks really slim in all of her videos. I don't know the exact red t-shirt that you're talking about here, but uh, she certainly does look slim in her videos. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ah, Donna is checking in. Hello, Donna. She's saying hi to me and everyone else. I hope you're having a great day, Donna. Let's see here. Uh -huh. Yep, you're right about the insulin bump thing. Carb cycling is nonsense. Varying protein intake does the job. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and Sana still sees a lot of carb cycling still mentioned. And the excuses of why merits with no proof. Well, we all know what some of them, why some of them still support carb cycling. Because they're trying to convince themselves that carb cycling is necessary 
which they think excuses their addiction, which they've never managed to beat. And I was watching a Dr. Anthony Chafee replay today that uh, he was talking about, you know, beating not just carb addiction, but all addictions. Um, he said, as long as, you know, every time you get, even if you, you know, end up eating two or three or four times a day to start with, when you're with having withdrawal symptoms from sugar or carbs, or whether you're trying to kick smoking or drinking or whatever it is, he said the, the addiction cycle can be broken easier if you're full of fatty red meat so that you're not hungry because getting hungry sometimes will trigger those other addictions as well. So, you know, if you're just getting started out or just trying to break an addiction, go right ahead and eat as often as you want, as much as you want, even if it ends up being, I've talked many times about how bad eating constantly throughout the day is for you. But when you're trying to break an addiction, I perfectly understand that. And it's not a bad way to go. We have a question up here from Donna for Vicky says hello from Arkansas. And Jackie says, I don't watch, watch Bart K much, but I did watch the spanking he gave Joey. It was pretty good. And if you haven't watched some of his recent stuff, he's really, because of the new terms of service, he has toned down his profanity quite a bit. There's still some in there, but he doesn't use profanity just for the sake of using profanity anymore. Um, he has toned that back quite a bit. And it looks like we have a question on how long did it take you to not have pain because I've been on carnivore way of eating for over three months and still have the pain. Well, it depends on how bad your pain is and, and you know, how long you've had it. I do still have pain. It's not nearly as bad as it used to be. The first reduction in pain I noticed was at about the two and a half to three month mark. Um, as I talked about in my interview with um, Two Crazy Ketos for their Veterans Day thing, I had left my note sheet too far over to the left, and my left shoulder is the one that's always been really bad. And without even realizing it, I just reached over and grabbed my notes and then realized that I had just done that thing. Um, but I still have pain. I mean, my left shoulder is still, still has pain. Of course, my right shoulder still has some pain, but that's from where I fell a couple weeks ago. And my back still has some pain and, you know, all of my joints still have pain, but it is 92 to 95% better. Um, but I was, you know, in a compromised arthritic state for, you know, 40 years. So how long will it take to, to not have any pain? I don't know. But I did notice that pain was starting to get less at about the two and a half to three month mark, but everybody's different. Just hang in there and know, and know that it will get less. I still have a lot of pain in my body, but when I started this journey, I was taking three pain pills a day. I was taking the maximum dose of the pain pill that I had, plus another pain pill on the side for the occasional really bad days. And I haven't taken a pain pill now since a couple of days after I fell. My shoulder was really sore that day, so I went ahead and took one. And that's the last one I took, and that's been a couple of weeks ago. So I don't take very many uh, I don't take very many pain pills anymore at all. So it is slowly getting better. And I hope it does the same for you. Robert West is here. Hello, Robert. Hello from cold Las Vegas, Nevada. Sounds you're Right. It sounds like an excuse to eat carbs. And I understand people have a hard time breaking their sugar addictions, their carb addictions. They don't want to get rid of it because they still want to have that occasional whatever it is that they're having. And they can justify it by calling it carb cycling or whatever. Paula has checked in. And in case you guys didn't see her comment on one of my videos a couple of days ago, she had a big red letter day going to the doctor's office. Um, her A1C is finally normal at 5.2. And yes, she is has a bonus of down 45 pounds now, but the big win is that A1C at 5.2. Paula, that deserves a great big high five and a fist bump. Good for you. Way to go.
Yeah, he's 100 pounds, put me at 122 at about five, five, two and a half, so probably won't hit it. But unobtainable goals always give you something to strive for. When I was younger, though, I was a size 8, 118 pounds. And that's, you know, that's the thing about goals. You might actually get there. Um, because my sister, who's a marathon runner, is just she claims she's five foot even, but I don't think she's quite five foot tall, and she weighs maybe 95 pounds soaking wet. Um, she's a tiny, tiny, tiny little girl. But the best thing about this diet or this way of eating, this way of life, is that wherever you stabilize, don't say, oh. I really wanted to get down to 122, but I'm stuck at 126. No, think, you know, if you stabilize and you end up staying at 126 for a year to a year and a half, that's a win. You've reached your optimal weight. Your body decides where you're going to go. Um, you can't just pick some number out of your head. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose some more weight, whether I get all the way down to 160 or not, who knows? I haven't been 160 since about, I want to say maybe ninth grade or so, maybe 10th grade. It's been a really long time since I was 160. Because um, I was about 185 when I went in the Army. And I'm not quite to that yet. I'm lower than when I got out, but I'm not to where I was when I got went into the Army. And to show you how much things have changed between early 80s thinking and today. And I know compared to where I was, I do look very slim to everybody. But I was a little bit lighter when I went into the Army than I am now. And my nickname all through boot camp and beyond was the all of everybody above me always called me, Hey, Heavy, how you doing today? Heavy was my nickname. So they thought at 185 pounds, I was still much bigger than the average soldier. And today, everybody's telling me how slim I look. And compared to where I was, I am slim. But that just, you know, goes back to, I've mentioned this a few times in some of my videos. If you go back and um, just pick your favorite beach and type into the search engine, that beach name 1970s and look at those pictures then come forward and type in that beach name 2020 or 2021 and look at the difference in the 70s pictures you have to search to find somebody that is obviously overweight and in the in the the more recent pictures you have to search for somebody that's not grossly overweight by yesterday's standards. Let's see what we got here. Everybody's see, there's still more people saying hi to Crafty and Carnivores than there are to me in my own comments. It shows you who the popular one is in here. Uh, yes, he yes, Buck. He's doing quite well. I haven't heard any official updates, but he does occasionally send me a text and said, everything's still going good. We'll see when I get home. Maybe I can talk him into coming on the channel for an interview. Maybe not. We'll see what happens with that. And Jackie is on day 19 of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. My work did some checkup stuff for forklift certification yesterday. You should have seen her face when I told her I had hot dogs and bacon for lunch and my BP was 110 over 68. Yeah, I actually just checked mine from... Uh, I'm a hair higher than you are today, Jackie. I just checked my blood pressure before I started the stream, and I was at 112 over 70. So I'm two points on both, both higher than you. Absolutely. Hot dogs and bacon. Great meal. Now, if you take the hot dog, and all beef hot dog, of course, hopefully you can find some that are no carbs. When I'm at home, I go to Stoice's House of Sausage because they make their own hot dogs and, and brats there. And they have one that's called the Bavarian Wiener that is 100% beef, nothing added. It has less than, he says, we like to calculate it at less than a carb, but realistically, there's about a carb in each one. But you take those, 
and then you take the duct tape of food bacon and you wrap the hot dog up in the bacon and then you stick all that in the air fryer till the bacon gets crispy. Oh yeah, now you now you're talking. That's a good meal. And Paula's just letting everybody know where she was. And of course, she knows she'll never see it again because you know she's 71. But that's still you're still had some great, great success. Let's see here. Yeah, Buck's sister is a marathon runner too. Yeah, my sister, I don't know. Well, she she retired from teaching after 38 years, not just in the same school, but in the same classroom. Well, that's not exactly true. She changed classrooms one time because they built a new building. So she moved from her classroom in the old building to her classroom in the new building at about the 22 or 23 year mark. But she was in the same school teaching the same classes for 38 years. And then the running store that's called Can't Stop Running um, sponsored her to Boston. So she ran the Boston Marathon, and then a year later she retired, and now she's managing one of their Can't Stop Running stores. And she still does. I mean, uh, it was a couple of years ago. Most people go out to eat and have a good time. Sometimes will cheat on their diet and have cake for their birthday. My sister, who is a January 1st baby, got up early in the morning, drove to Tennessee, ran a 50-miler on her birthday, and then drove home all in the same day. That's not my idea of a birthday, but that's what she wanted to do. Brian, Bob, wondering if you have... Yeah, I had, I had fatty liver when I started this. My liver markers were way out of whack. If uh, And I have ser I've talked about this several times in my earlier videos, but yes. Um, I had fatty liver. In fact, it was diagnosed as needing some extreme treatment when I got my labs done when I first started the carnivore diet. And I said, well, Doc, rather than doing all this stuff, I just started a new diet that's supposed to help fatty liver. Why don't you give me three months and I'll come back and we can retest. And if things haven't improved, we'll do it your way. And he said, that sounds perfectly reasonable to me. And I went back and my liver markers were lower than they had been in five years. So that has completely reversed. Um I'm curious what you're eating that you keep have recurring issue with fatty liver. I mean, fatty liver happens primary. I mean, there are some other causes. And if they're, if you're not doing any of these things, I would suggest checking with your doctor and seeing what else it might be. Um, but the two biggest causes of it are either alcohol consumption or fructose consumption, which means you're eating fruit. Um, either of those or just way too many carbs. Um, I'm assuming since you're here that you're eating a carnivore lifestyle, but if you're a follower of a certain doctor that says um, fruit and honey are okay, that's what's causing your fatty liver. But if it's not that, I would go check in with your doctor and see what he has to say because once you've been carnivore for more than three or four months, you should not have fatty liver and it should not keep popping up. Let's see here. Yeah, see, Sana has seen some of those beach flashback pics, and it's mind-blowing. Um, yep, in grade school, one heavy kid per class. You are exactly right. Let's see here. Paul, yeah, I think it was about 16 when I weighed 118, but stopped growing at like 13. Yeah, and that sort of happened to me. We are having a conversation. Um, last Monday, we had a fish fry here at the church for the men. The men had a fish fry. I, of course, didn't eat any of it because they they asked me if I wanted a piece of fish that was not breaded and then fried. But I looked at what they were using in all of the fryers, and they were all some kind of vegetable oil. And I said, no, I'll just pass on that. But thanks anyway. Um, so I just said, you know, I, I walked around and talked to people, did not eat any of that. But one of the conversations we got into was basketball because Pastor Watford played a lot of basketball all through high school because – 
I don't know if I've ever showed you any pictures of him, but you can go search for Spring Creek Baptist Church, North Carolina, and you'll find him and you'll see that he's a very large guy. He's tall and he played basketball a lot. I, of course, was tall when I was in fourth, fifth and sixth grade. So I played a lot of elementary school basketball. Unfortunately, at the end of sixth grade going into seventh grade, I was about five, seven and a half. And today I'm about five, seven and a half. That's when I stopped growing upwards. So while I was tall in elementary school, um, about halfway through junior high, I was no longer tall enough to even consider playing on the basketball team, even though I still like to consider myself a fairly good shot with a basketball. Um, I was just way too short. By the time high school rolled around, I was way, way, way too short to uh, to be playing basketball. So that's that's sort of what happened to me. And I understand Paula or Jackie. Let's see here. Yeah, and I understand. Two carbs per dog, the the Hebrew National are a little higher in carbs, but they are really good. That's one of my favorite hot dogs. So, you know, depending on how many you have, if you're targeting, you know, at a keto lifestyle, um, you're 20 carbs a day, you still have 10 hot dogs in your meal. As long as you don't have any other carbs with that, you could have 10 of those hot dogs as your meal. And I think I could very easily eat 10 of them. They're very, very good. Um Let's see here. I had someone tell me late last night from a shorts that I was going to die in 30 seconds from scurvy. I said, it's been 13 hours and no scurvy. Yep. Um, I'm still waiting. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to get scurvy at some point. I'm sure of it. Cause you know, I've been doing this for eight months now. I'm sure my teeth are going to fall out and, and the big scar that I have running down the length of my sternum from where I had heart surgery is going to open up and I'm just going to be a mess. Um, there's not one documented case of scurvy anywhere in the literature from eating a carnivore diet. Now, there are some things that can cause scurvy-like symptoms. There are many things, actually, that can cause scurvy-like symptoms. And depending on how carnivore-ish you are, um, if you're eating a 100% carnivore diet, you don't need as much vitamin C. Now, if you're having a certain amount of carbohydrate in your diet, um, I don't know the, the ratios. I can't tell you for sure where the break point is. But if you watch Professor K's videos, he makes it fairly clear that as your carbohydrate intake increases, your vitamin C requirement increases also. So I don't know where the break point is in that. But... You know, the people that got scurvy back in the old sailor days were not the, the captain and the the officers. It was the, the crewmen that, you know, they got to eat their porridge, oatmeal, every day, but never got to have any fresh fruits or anything like that that had vitamin C in it. And they certainly never got meat. They got porridge every day. They were out on the boat months at a time, and that's why they got scurvy. Hot dog split with, yes, 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 yes. An old-fashioned pig in a blanket, only you do it in the air fryer, or you can do it in the oven. If you're going to put cheese in there, you probably want to do it in the oven because the air fryer might get too hot too quick, and all the cheese melt out of the inside and be laying in a puddle at the bottom of your air fryer. But And I used to love that. Not wrapped in bacon, but my mom used to do that a lot. She would cut a hot dog down the middle, stuff little pieces of cheese in it, and then throw, the, throw them in the oven until the, the cheese started to melt, and that was lunch. Oh, you're bringing back some good memories there, Buck. I like that stuff. Um, and Sana says, she doesn't have a goal weight. I'll have to see how I feel come every weight loss milestone. Absolutely. And that's the best way to do it, you know, because if we get something stuck on our head that we want to get to this weight, this is where we're bound and determined to get to, and then we don't get there, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment. So... Just go where it goes and see what happens. I know I still have plenty of uh, of weight to lose because, you know, my rear end and my thighs are still fat. I mean, I can still remember the old Special K commercials from back in the day. Can you pinch an inch? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I can take two hands and, 
and and I can pinch about a foot in a couple of places still. So I still have quite a bit of fat to lose. Oh, you're very welcome. And to any veterans that are in here, thank you also for your service. Um, let's see here. Sherry says, nice PP, Bob. Congrats. I'm working very hard to get off three BP meds. You're 19 days in. Yeah. And it takes a while. Um, I was off all of my other medicines and my final blood pressure medicine took me several tries to get off. I, uh, I was about three, three and a half months, maybe even four months into the process, and I was down to just one BP med. I would stop it, and my blood pressure would st slowly start to rise. And when it got a little bit too high, I'd go back on it again for a few days. And I don't remember exactly. You'd have to go back and watch all of my videos, or I would have to go back and watch all of my videos to remember exactly when I got off that last BP med. But uh, it takes... It takes a lot. It takes a long time, especially because, I, like you, I was on three BP meds. The first one I got rid of right away and never really noticed any effects. I mean, within the first couple of days, because it was hydrochlorothiazide, which is basically a diuretic. But I didn't need a diuretic because the second you start a true carnivore diet like beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, you're going to start to evacuate all that inappropriate inflammation which is what the diuretic is supposed to help with anyway. So that one went away right away. The other two took a little longer. So just hang in there, Sherry. It will happen. It just some people takes a lot longer than others. Angie wants to know if I noticed any change in your eyesight. I, I can't really tell, perhaps, but... These glasses, I don't wear them when I'm on live because now you can see all the lights reflecting in them. So I take them off when I'm doing live stream. Um, these glasses are fairly new. I got them down here last year in February because my eye doctor goes to the church down here. She's the one doctor that I have down here. And because I had done discount eyeglasses, you know, went to whoever was on duty at Walmart for many years because... I, did, I can't afford a real eye doctor with real glasses, but she gave me a really nice discount um, because I go to this church. But these glasses are far superior to the glasses that I've had pre in previous years. So I noticed a huge improvement in my eyesight then. So I don't know. Um, it's hard to say if I've noticed any improvement in my eyesight because... They got so much better when I got good glasses. Um, although I can kind of read the comments over here. I still put them up on the screen where everybody can see them because it makes them three times as big on the screen so I can read them without squinting and leaning in real close to get the, the, the comments read. Let's see here. Yes, I'm hoping so, too. I did a little trial um, yesterday in the video that is not going to be seen because the wind noise was too bad. And I made a couple of laps with my trekking poles. Um, and it's still just, just not quite strong enough yet. I figure I'll need to do a few more test runs with the trekking pole just to re-strengthen the muscles that work when I'm using the trekking pole. But I'm hoping to get out on trail sometime next week. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm certainly not going to push it because the last thing I want to do is get a couple, three miles back in on a trail and then have my shoulder crap out on me and then have a really long, hard walk back out to my car from there. Uh, Tampa Jane. Hello, Tampa. Glad you're here. Just joined live. My back surgery got postponed again. To, oh. But all is now full steam ahead. Lost another two pounds down 219 total. No exercise. You are 100% right on that. Yep, hang in there, Tampa Jane. Um, I know you want to get that back surgery so that you can get up and start walking again. And I certainly hope that that continues to go. But now with February 7th, um, you know, you got another two weeks to do some healing. So... Hopefully that extra two weeks makes the 
hopefully that makes the surgery go a little better for you. Um, it's out there. It's at the end of one of my videos the last couple of days in November. Um, I'll let you know a little secret. I've been practicing, and sometime in the next month or two, I'll show you all how the updates are going with that because that's one of the things I do pretty much every day when I'm in the teen center cooking and doing my exercises in the chair. I then take my shoes off so that I'm in my sock feet, and I just do a little dancing. I'm not going to do a lot of that. Oh, and it's coming up. I'm sure I'm going to find it here, but we've got another member coming up here, Tampa Jane. Thank you, Tampa Jane. I'm glad you are a channel member. Uh, oh, speaking of eyesight, I think I'm nuts, but I swear I can see the roads better at night now. Yeah. Um, there are many people that report that they have better, um, that they ha are getting better eyesight. Um, like I said, I can't tell because I just got new glasses a year ago and it was a vastly improved from there. Okay. Eating keto. Thanks, Bob. That's so I hope, I hope that helps. Um, you may try if you're eating keto, just cut, you don't have to cut them all off. Just try to dial the carbs down just a hair more. Or if you're eating any of the dirty keto stuff, you know, like the keto bars and cookies and any of that stuff, maybe cut that stuff out. Like I said, I don't know what you're eating. Um, but maybe check that out and see. Because the big thing that you have to be careful of the keto, I'm sure you know this, but there's a big difference between... Um, total carbs and net carbs. They like to play a lot of reindeer games with fiber and other ingredients that, you know, so that they can say this bread only has one carb per slice, but then you start looking at it and it's actually, you know, can be as many as 10 carbs per slice, but then they, they do the reindeer games with the fiber and the sugar alcohols, which can, because of the way they're metabolized, if they're metabolized, can be one of those things that's metabolized in the liver, leading to recurrence of fatty liver. So just investigate everything thoroughly and let me know how it's going. Uh, yeah, James says he was that one heavy kid too. Let's see here. I'm trying to scroll down just to get to... There we go. Tampa Jane is now a new YouTube member. If I, if my math is correct, that makes six. We might actually be able to do a, a members only. I did just do this week a members only Zoom call, and I know what it says in the in the tiers, but until we get a few more people in the channel membership, I will probably do um, a Zoom call with everybody regardless of tier until we get enough people to make it worth splitting up between a, a members only live stream and then a higher tier members only zoom call. That's probably what we're going to do for now. Um, but I'll keep everybody that's channel member informed and Buck sent me a $5 super sticker. Thank you, Buck. You guys have no idea how much that means to me. Um, it says sent you a coffee or a seltzer. Um, when I'm still, because I do still occasionally have coffee, but I certainly don't go out and spend five bucks on it. I, for my occasional coffee, I did just get, um, it worked out to about uh, 36 cents a pod. I ordered some of those coffee pods because all they have here at the church is the, you know, the, the coffee makers that take those pods. Um, so I bought a hundred of those and whatever I don't use between now and I leave, I'll just leave here at the church because the coffee maker I have at home is one of the old style drip kind. And I like that. Um, but that's what, uh, so my coffees are, are about 35 or 40 cents each, but I do thank you for that. I mean, when you're on a fixed income, a couple extra bucks a month makes a huge difference. And now I scrolled past a question up here. 
Let me see here. Freedom. Sir, I started a carnivore diet and quit after three months. Um, did not feel any improvements in energy or weight loss. Have non-alcoholic fatty liver and poor digestion. Um, one of the things you need to look at here, Freedom, is how long have you been sick? Sometimes it takes longer than three months. If you recall, I don't know if you've ever seen Kelly Hogan's story, but she actually gained weight for the first six months. There are many things that the carnivore diet can help improve, and fatty liver is just one of those. Energy and weight loss are some of the other things, but there are a multitude of autoimmune diseases, and your body will prioritize what it thinks it needs to heal first. And so you may have some underlying autoimmune condition that your body feels needs to be fixed first. And unfortunately, we don't get to pick which one gets fixed first, and we don't get to pick one, or we don't get to, to say how long that's going to take. Um, but the one thing I would say, um, if you quit carnivore diet, would you do go back to, to eating a standard American diet loaded up with carbs? Um, surely, even if nothing else ever improves, getting carbs out of your life will increase every will eventually help you in many many ways because you know taking a, a glass full of arsenic and drinking it is a fast way to poison yourself slowly dumping sugar in your body every day is a slow poison but sugar is still poison to the body let me see if i've missed anything in skipping skipping ahead here um Okay, I'm not sure what you're what we're talking about there. Let me back up here. Okay, I think I'm caught up, and we've got about seven or eight minutes left here. So let me go th through and see if I've missed anything important. Oh, Craig's got a question. Bob, give us your opinion: beef versus pork. I see a pork roast and pressure cooked it today. It was a nice change. Um, I like them both equally well. Beef is better for you. Beef has more of the things you need. But occasionally mixing in pork like I've been doing to reduce the budget a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Depending on what cuts of pork you're using, like if you're using the pork belly or bacon, that's got plenty of fat in it. The, the pork uh, center cut pork chops that I had, I ended up cooking them in butter and then added a little more butter to the top because the fat content didn't look like it was quite there. So I wanted to add some fat to it. You want to make sure that you're getting... Um, you know, somewhere between 65 and 75% and of your calories from fat and the rest of protein. And the way to judge that is if you've got a piece of meat on your plate before you cook it, there's and there's about one eighth of it looks to be fat. That's about the right ratio. That's a good place to start. And getting calories from fat is where, you know, what you want to make sure you're doing. So pork and then even beyond that is chicken are much less fatty than beef. So you want to make sure that you're adding fat to the leaner cuts of pork and most cuts of chicken. But I don't see any, I mean, meat is meat and carnivore is carnivore. And all of those things are good. Just be mindful of your fat when you're doing those. Um, yeah, and Jackie just said, what is, who didn't lose weight for 10 years, but was having other improvements. So she stuck with us. Some of us have major internal healing. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was saying there. Yep. Thank you for your service at Robert West. Yes, indeed. And Sana also says a lot of other healing first before the body will lose weight try and stick it out. You have to send tons of support if you need it. Yeah. And if you're, if you need more support, I have a free Facebook group. Um, ready, set keto. I don't know if they have a Facebook group yet or not, but, um, carnivore quest carnivore quest has a free Facebook group and there's a lot of smart people in there. And the other place, the place where I get all a lot of my support and questions answered when I have them, I belong to Dr. Barry's Mighty Networks. It's five bucks a month. And for five bucks a month, you get ex an extra live stream 
You get access to all the Q&A, and there are a lot of really smart people in Dr. Barry's Mighty Networks. You can find links to that at the bottom of any of his videos. Um, oh, Patty is, finally, is checking in. Hello, Patty. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Hi, Patty. I hope you're doing well. We've had a couple of really nice days, except for the wind we had yesterday, but it's pretty nice out there. It improves everything else, so why not eyesight? Yeah, it. and there are a lot of people that will claim their eyesight has gotten better, and I totally believe them. we're over 60 people watching. Fabulous. Thank you all for showing up. I do appreciate it. But, yeah, the there are a lot of people that say their eyesight gets better. Like I said, I just can't tell because my new glasses happened just a couple of months before I started this, and I was still enjoying well, one of the study Bibles that I bought, I made the mistake of forgetting to check to make sure it was large print edition. So I had to wear my glasses and I have a handheld magnifying glass that I was using to read that. And when I got home to Omaha this year, I picked it up off my nightstand and started reading through it without realizing that my magnifying glass was still with my Bibles out in the trailer. And I could read it just fine with my new glasses. Of course, these are bifocals but I could still read them. So I just, I can't say for sure that my eyesight has gotten better because it got so much better with the new glasses. See, Kiddo Child Player Reindeer Games in an email they sent me regarding net carbs. Yeah. Um, and some things, some, some net carbs are better than others. Um, I think for most people doing keto, that keto chow stuff is probably okay. If you're doing keto, I um, the main things I'm talking about when I say reindeer games, the ones you really have to be careful with, because they're borrowing on a very famous doctor's name. All of the snacks that now carry the Atkins name on them, those are awful, awful, awful. Um, so it's it's you need to. You need to the, you need to be careful. Some some reindeer games are worse than others. Um, I still think for most people, keto chow is probably okay if you're doing keto. The only keto chow product I use is their daily minerals because I try not to do any carbs at all. But if you're doing keto and you're doing some carbs, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, see, there's quite a few of the smart people in my group saying that you're probably reversing your liver to the disease. It just takes longer. Um, let's see here. Somebody mentioned, I can't find the comment now, that they were getting some stomach issues with pork. It's very possible. Some people tolerate other meats better than others. Um, that's where the N equals one experimentation comes in. You have to just keep trying you're stu trying things for yourself, and if it doesn't make you feel good, go back to what you were doing. In fact, I think yesterday's video was talking all about that quite a bit. Let's see here. It happened, it was Patty. It happened to me three or four times right after I ate pork. So don't eat pork for a while. Maybe try some chicken with adding some fat into it. See what happens there. Um, maybe try adding more fat to the pork or cook it in bacon grease or even in tallow, see what happens. Um, you just have to play with it and see what happens. After eating so much beef and chicken, it tastes funny to me. I understand that, and that's uh, my carnivorous life. Hello to you. I don't think I've said hi to you yet, so I'm glad you're here. Um, if you missed the first part of this, don't forget to go back and check out the replay later. Um... And Buck is also one of the smart people in Dr. Barry's network. Or are you pointing at me? I don't know. Um, but the, the really smart people have a little icon after their name because they're his moderators. Let's see here. Yeah, unfortunately, hyperlinks don't, uh, don't post well, but... My face. If you if you go to Facebook and um, just 
search for semi-retired Bob, it'll pop right up. It'll be the first thing that pops up and fill out a little three person questionnaire. Um, yep. Hit the thumbs up. Yeah. Ooh, Atkins. I understand. Yeah. They're, they're back in the day when Atkins, if you actually read Atkins book and did the Atkins diet, he was basically doing, um, a keto. It's ba he was basically keto, but all the carbs he wanted to have were from leafy greens and that kind of stuff. Everything else, you know, had to be basically carnivore-ish. And that's where he slightly diverges from what we call carnivore today. Um, I'm going to do a quick scroll through. Yeah, not telling the real carbs versus net carbs, which does not tell you what you're getting. Really, Dr. Barry calls this reindeer games as well. Um, introduction was keto. I have his original book. Yeah. And that's, if you, if those of you have not actually read the Atkins book, it's worth reading even today. Um, a lot of what he says still holds true and it works very well. Um, one more thing. I think I've mentioned this before. If you haven't seen, um, if you haven't read Chris Palmer's book, uh, Brain Energy, I think is what it's called. Um, I've got a link to it down in the description, but it's also on Audible. So if you have an Audible subscription, um, you can listen to his book on Audible. And it's I highly recommend it. That's the latest book I've been recommending, along with all the other books that I that I recommend. Um, thinking Paula. And let's see here. Yeah, learned that the hard way too, Santa. Oops. What are we learning the hard way? Oh, net carbs versus real carbs. But I think we've come to the end of the comments. I'm all caught up. If I missed one of your comments up in the earlier sections, oh, I do have one more thing. I want to click up here on a banner while I close this out. Um, there's my email address for those that want to ask questions in a more private situation. Um, that's perfectly okay, but I want to thank you all. There's two more comments here. Let's see here. Um, thank you, Bob. And sorry, but I have the email to prove it. Um, but yeah, the free video fat fiction was the first step into health for me away from diabetes. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, but I'm glad you all, you all were here. Have a great evening. It's now about 13 minutes till Ready, Set, Keto comes live. So grab yourself something to drink. Take a restroom break. Kick back. Relax. I'll see you in one of my videos tomorrow. I'll see you live again next week at the same time. Have a great evening, everyone. I'm very glad you were here.